So 20 million. If you want your chats, because we can hear all the sensitive information. Hello, thanks for putting us live, Ned. While we're having conversation, thanks for that, Ned. I know, but you don't really have any authority. You're not Jackie Weaver. I'm the director. Ah, you're the director. Yes. Is that what you've called yourself? No, it's my job role. It's oh, it's your actual job role. I don't think it is. I'm not I sure. Say three, two, one. <laughs> Does that make you the director by saying three, two, one? Yes. It sounds like you got dusty bin. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're here to do the uh, the press conference reaction. I don't know how to react to that press conference. There was words. There was... I remember words. There was. Um, I do remember words. I'm not sure what those words said, but um, yeah. It, so... Well, the the biggest issue out of it all was where, where's the injury update? Is Dan Juma part? Dan Juma back on the grass. Yeah, but he but was back on the grass last week. Don't know if he's quite ready. And Dobbin's doing well. Yeah, but it's, are um, they going to be considered for Saturday? Is that, that's, that's all that matters, Oh, no, and it's got a couple of knocks. A couple the of knocks. So, there you go. That is the reaction. Mm. So the, there you go. <laughs> they are rubbish. See you later. That was just a rubbish best that was It was just, like... I like the question of the, the from the from the young person who wanted to ask him about... Dominic Carvel and Lewin's song that was mm. done by the Argentinian commentators. Because mm. key question. Because if there is a question, if there is a person you're gonna ask a question like that to, it would be Sean Dyche. It's Sean. Because we all know that and he. That's a Sean promise. Because we all know he loves stuff like that. He has his finger on the the pulse, uh, you know, of of social media and stuff like that. Uh, okay. Adam, I think it was Andre Gomez. Yeah, oh, the was, oh, that was the, the last what the question. Comment is. You couldn't hear some of the questions because they're supposed to have a microphone. And obviously the person who's in charge of handling the press conference never told them to use a microphone. So you can't hear the question. And if and when the manager asks it and obviously doesn't reference the person, because why would you? You don't know who they're talking about. Like, once again, you forget that these press conferences are for us to educate the fan base on what's going on at the club. Honest to God. Sometimes I'm just I just sit here with my head and my hands going, what are we doing? What are we doing? Once again, communi communication. Give them a mic or tell them to use a mic. Or if they ask a question, don't use a mic. Tell them to ask it again with the mic. So we've got some idea of what's going on. Um, but there you go. There you go. The press conference was a bit rubbish and we'll move. We'll just move on. Um, a lot of talk about uh, PSR. Mm. Being scrapped, yeah. Today, what a surprise! Um, what I know, we there's not really anything we can do, is there? If it is scrapped, I mean, I know the Leicester and Forest have considered legal action, but as we've been told, the Premier League is a private competition, mm. and you can't really go anywhere with it. So, is that it? Do we just have to, you know, get over it? Because Everton probably will get another point another points deduction we'll probably find out Monday or Tuesday about that um, and it'll just be us and Forrest who are probably only, the only two teams ever ever to be punished for PSR I mean do we just take it? Mm. I don't know what we can do though. yeah yeah that's what I, I mean I don't know what we can do other than highlight the fact that um I don't know whether we can hi just highlight the fact that how come you're getting rid of it then? If this is appropriate, why are you getting rid of mm. these? If points yeah, yeah. deductions it are appropriate now, which is what you yeah, said, yeah. why is it appropriate for Everton and Nottingham Forest to get mm. points deduction? Why is it appropriate for Leicester City to have a points deduction next season? And if Leicester City don't get a points deduction next season, how is that fair on Forest and Everton mm. who've had one this season? Because they've backed themselves into a corner now, the Premier League. Mm. Instead of just saying, you see, really, what I think should have happened, right? They tried. We know what happened. They tried to make an example of evidence to say to people, mm. "We can police what we're doing." 
But when they heard the total outcry and seeing a lot of people going, this is nonsense, they really should have had an emergency meeting and maybe spoke to the independent commission and said, right, mm. scrap evidence, points deduction, yeah, yeah. come up with a different punishment because these rules are not going down well with the clubs. Because yeah. don't forget, Everton got the 10 points and Everton have had to play with a 10-point deduction for three months more yeah, than anybody yeah. else, right? Within that time, they seen the uproar. They also saw nobody spending any money in January yeah. because people were scared. So they really should have had a meeting with the Independent Commission, maybe. Maybe a meeting with Everton um, and said, look, we accept the first thing wasn't correct. We've, we've evaluated. Uh, we think the commission was too harsh on Everton. Blah, de, blah, de, blah. And they could have gone for a suspended points deduction even. If they didn't want to scrap it all together, they could have gone, you're under <clears throat> probation for a year. Yeah, yeah. If you fail the next one, then you get the six points, whatever, whatever it is. But then the caveat to that could have been they scrap it anyway in the summer because they don't think it's appropriate. Yeah. Because all we said this at the time, very much like the Nias rule. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. Are Everton going to be the only team ever done with it? Well, they're not because Forrest are as well, yeah. but is it just going to be us and Forrest? Mm. And what do you do with Leicester? And what do mm. you do with Chelsea? Oh, Chelsea's not getting looked at. City? Till next season. Own City's not getting Will, will, will the, these the, rules, the, will, when City get punished, will they, will they, will they fall under the rules now because they, they were punished? Because they won't be retrospective rules. No, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, will he be punished for the rules of when they were charged, which are the rules that we've been done for? Or will it be done for some future rules, which which apparently there's some, like a, like, a, like in the NBA or, or baseball in America, a, a, a luxury tax. Um, but how it does just, that work, it just, the luxury tax? They'll, they'll be punished financially, won't they? <laughs> She's um, just got a fine. Essentially, that's yeah. Great for Newcastle City. No, I know. Arsenal, and, and United. That's whatever. why City have obviously battered it down, dragged it, dragged it out as long as they could. And yet, and one of the reasons why Everton apparently, well, if you read between the lines, have been we're punished heavily for the first time is because we tried to drag it out and we didn't want to play ball as such. Um, whereas Forest, we're just, just you know, took took what. Took, took it as as they needed to because they they seen they seen what had happened to Everton. So it is it is just. I mean, I don't really like going over old ground, and I just it's a story there, and I just feel like it it needs addressing because to Evertonians, to us, we feel really hard done by already. You mm-hmm. know, you're looking at the league table, and you think, and you don't know yet, do you? You know, I've seen a few I've seen a few people say, oh, it's looking a little bit brighter, but that's. They don't. We don't know what we're going to receive yet, so mm-hmm. we, we can't say it's looking a little bit brighter. If they hit us with four points next week, let's just say, then we're back right in the the mire. And if we have to go to an appeal, then that appeal could go after the last day, and then you 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 the whole thing is up in the air again. It's 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 just a terrible terrible look again for the Premier League and for the Premier to go. Oh yeah, we might scrap this because it's not really worked, and you know. Yeah, but it's only Everton and Forest. Mm. Everyone else will just go. Ah, it doesn't really matter, and that's everyone else will probably just go. Yeah, that's that's right. Well, let's just change it because uh, it doesn't work. And January was really quiet, but certainly for us and for Forest, we're the ones who've had to deal with it. And we've had to deal with it more because we got the ten points and we we want we appealed and it hung over us for three months. I mean, if Forest Forest are appealing, but what what are they really going to get reduced to? A couple of points. It's, for us, it was it was huge and. I just find it again really, really pathetic, and and one r- rule for one and one rule for another. Um, That's ridiculous. And and again, it's we're getting into that period where you want to focus on football, and you you know very much like yesterday with Richard Masters coming out and speaking, sending the letter, and you know, in one way he's saying, well, we can revoke, we can stop anyone from coming in. Mm. But then when you read the second point, you were like, well, as long as it's more to do with proving you've got the money than anything, isn't it? It's more about proving the money and just continually dangling, dangling the carrot. So we, on both things, we are no nearer to knowing what's actually happening. We'd set, you know, the letter, the letter that they sent to the fans forum didn't give any kind of, sorry, the fab 
didn't really give anything any clues did it it just sort of went well we can do this but we can also do this and it doesn't really say well can you give us some insight into where they i think the only thing it showed you is that they haven't been rejected yeah, yeah. Because some... they haven't failed the, the things that people said they were going to fail and would be rejected or couldn't. They can never be rejected. Well, they can. And it, it's in black and white. And it was always in black and white. And I don't know where people got this idea. Well, I, 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 certain commentators on. I slightly disagree, though. because You I can think... disagree. It's in black no, and no, white. No, no. But I think when you look at the first bit, the first bit is like, is like we can do it. But it doesn't actually give any ground. Yeah, but it's, it, they can no, reject no, but they it. Don't. That's all that matters. But they don't. Though. That's so the point. It's that... more down to the financial side of things. If you come in and you're a normal business, it, do, it normally falls on the second bit, doesn't it? If you're going to be dismissed, you're going to be dismissed straight off the bat, aren't you? The mm -hmm. second part is the most important part, which is the Premier League can just drag it out as long as they want. And it's... it's... No, well, that's, we know that because... They've done it with Newcastle, but these when the you know people said these can't be rejected. Well, they can. So you were wrong. The people who said that I said it. Yeah, because I don't so think you they were can wrong. be rejected they, because they tell you they can. So it's, no, it's, I know. But what I'm saying is, is that the first bit is like the day they knock on the door and go, "Can we come in?" And they go, "Yes or no." I I disagree. I, I think you you make it shoot whatever thing you wanted to shoot the reality of it is they can be rejected and they haven't been but you're right they didn't they didn't give us any inf they didn't give us any indication when they might wrap it up do you know what i mean and they didn't do it with the points thing is the same that i think that i believe i might be wrong but i believe Everton football club know exactly how many points they're being deducted right now and yet no one's saying a word mm. oh we don't know sean dyke is just oh i don't know there's me no word but i think there has because we we knew that Forest had their ruling for a mm. week. We knew that Everton knew yeah, the 10 points for a week. So someone, right. not saying everyone at the club knows, and Sean Dykes might not have any mm. idea because people might not be telling them, but I imagine Everton's legal representation know what the outcome is. Um, so uh, right now, we're just sort of in a in a state of limbo on both, aren't we? We're, we're no further on. The weeks just keep racing mm. by. We just need the conclusion on everything. and um, We need a conclusion on knowing exactly where we are with the points and knowing exactly where we are with this takeover. If it's not happening, then bin them. If you can, you've said you can, so bin them. If you can't, then give us an indication mm. when it's likely. And if it's on triple seven, why can't the Premier League give them a deadline? Why can't Farad Mashiri give them a deadline mm. and go, lads and ladies, if you haven't got this money that is what it, or, or this condition or whatever it is, if you haven't done that by five o'clock on Friday, I'm pulling out of this deal. Do that, but no sure one. He's never no, he's not. Of course, he's not, because no one seems really the that. The terms, the terms suit him. I still think. I still think it. The Premier League. I put it on the Premier League that they didn't want Everton being taken over in the middle of this thing when their owners could do exactly what Chelsea did and go. Not our watch, Gov. Nothing to do with us. You can't punish us. We're new owners trying to keep this club going. They've wanted this PSR thing wrapped up, and it wouldn't surprise me. If both of these happen quite quickly now, we get news of the takeover and news of the uh, the points within close proximity to each other because they're, they're sorted. Doesn't help us. We just got to right now. We just got to concentrate on winning football matches, haven't we? That's because no matter what happens, we have to be in this league mm -hmm. next season. We have to be for the financial aspects of it. So. You know, the important thing for us is how do we get enough points to stay in this league? Mm -hmm. The issue with it is, like, if there was no second PSR charge, we'd all be going four points ahead of Luton. If we can beat Burnley at the weekend and Luton don't don't beat Bournemouth, mm -hmm. we could be six points ahead of them and they'd have yeah, six yeah. games to play and they go to City next week. You, you know, you're trying to chalk off the games then, aren't you, to just see yourself over that line, but... There's a threat, isn't there, of mm -hmm. one point, two points, three points? Who knows what it could be? Could it be more than three points? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't know because there's been oh, yeah. there's been four hearings, hasn't there, or three hearings so far, and they've all come up with different points, Sally. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, three, isn't it? Have come up with different points, Sally, and, and obviously we've had our, we've been the fourth hearing. Nottingham Forest appeal will be the fifth hearing. You know, so you just you it, it, like I said yesterday. For me, this has been the worst season in my life of supporting Everton. Just because of the stuff that's gone on. Mm. The football's been terrible. The results have been horrific for four months. 
when you clump that all together with a, a takeover that's gone on to what is it week 30 now of a 12 week process and add all that together and have two bleeding points deductions <laughs> no that's not a, not a real season that's not though is it it's not not a real season it's not a football season it's a it's a everything else season and it's still not it's still not done yet any season that you talk about what happens off the pitch rather than on the pitch just isn't a real isn't a real thing mm-hmm. um you know like it was sort of when co- when we had the covid season and things yeah. like that it's like when there's all these hurdles to jump that are not football then it's it's not it's just not real in a way um so the sooner we can put it behind us and 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 move on to actual discussing football and the mm-hmm. uh, you know transfers and injuries and all that say so you you watch press conferences and you the questions are do you know what what points deduction you have you heard any more about the takeover mm-hmm. and it's like shouldn't you be asking them who's available for saturday isn't that the first question isn't this a press conference to highlight the game that we're playing on saturday mm-hmm. not everything else so until we get actually back to that then it is just uh, i think everyone needs that don't they think the manager it- Listen, wherever you are with the manager, I know a lot of people have, have done that with him, but wherever mm. for him, he, he surely, you know, he just wants to be asked about the footy, he doesn't want to be asked about bleeding PSR charges mm. and takeover stuff, does he? he? Quite sure he wants to just be asked about, like, you're playing Burnley and whatever, you know. Um, God knows us as fans need, we need some relief from it mm. all, don't we? Some sweet relief. We do though, don't we? It's, we do though, don't we? Though we do though, because it's just mm. it is tiring and boring and yeah, it is. You know, we want to be talking about players, don't we? Don't we want to be thinking about who we could potentially sign mm. in the summer, things like that. Be nice, no, but that's that's what the fo- that's what football is. Yeah, yeah. It? Football should be about the bits that are gonna enthuse us and and make us excited to mm. go to the match and all that. And, Thinking about lawyers and bleeding <laughs> spreadsheets and who you'd have to sell to appease things is not what most of us signed up for, mm. is it? Yeah. So boring. It's all got a bit boring now. Very much like this season. So. Yeah, I mean this season's <laughs> just horrible, isn't it? Nearly. Uh, Gary Balls says, "Howdy, Josh says, uh, afternoon, guys. What one player from the '85 team would you put in this side for the remaining games to guarantee safety?" Um, be Graham Sharp or Andy mm. Gray or or Trevor Stephen, someone mm. who can score goals mm. or make goals. Um, yeah. To be honest. I don't think putting Nevin goal would, would guarantee safety. It's about mm. putting the ball in the back of the net, isn't it? So, be Peter Reid or a couple, what you just said there. Mm. Someone who can, like, Reid had run games for us. He was that good, but you're right. Someone who can make a difference in the top end of the, the pitch mm. is what we need more than anything. And you grind sharp at being no good because we don't create anything for him. We don't though, do no. we? So he'd Trevor Stephen then maybe? It'd have to be Trevor Stephen yeah. who did create things and got goals. Yeah. Um, Steve P says, Baz, watched the video about Tor Andre Flo and it said we were close to signing him before he went to Chelsea. Is that true? And if so, do you think he would have done well for us? It would have been 96. Well, it was actually March 1997. We'd agreed the deal to sign Tor Andre Flo and Klaus Ektervag. Joe Royal. Um and I think Peter Johnson pulled the plug on it, yeah. which resulted in Joe Royal leaving the football club on the same day. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Tor Andre Flo would have made a big difference. Yeah, Revan, a very good striker. He was tall, got goals, good footballer for his good touch for a big man. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. And would he give us a presence up there as well? Um, yeah, I think he'd have made a big difference, mate. Yeah, it was a it was a really weird one that wasn't it? Um, and we would have kept Joe off because it, it was supposed to be a press conference at five o'clock to announce them, and then when the press conference came on, it was basically 
to announce this pre-season uh, Umbro Cup tournament. Mm. And it was all a bit weird because loads of press had, had gone there thinking it was going to be the announcement of these, these two players, which was, it was all lined up. It was practically signed and sealed. Um, and then there was no announcement and it was all a little bit, what's this all about? Um, and then about an hour later, it was it, Joe Royal has left the Everton Football Club, mm. walked into a room and basically talked himself into leaving the club effectively. Mm. Mm. thinking that he would be stopped and, and Peter Johnson just went, well, if you want to go, go. And before you know it, um, before you know it, he, he was gone and we hadn't signed these two players and it was one of the strangest days I can remember being in Evertonian thinking something amazing was going to happen and something terrible. And I mean, since then, you're not just part of the course. Oh, but... yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is this is only two years after winning the FA Cup. Mm. And getting into Europe and having Andre Kinselskis and although I know Kinselskis had just gone, hadn't he? But having that stuff and we'd we'd agreed to sign Slavin Billet and West Ham, which was a big sign, hadn't we? Joe Royal wanted him, didn't he? Mm-hmm. That was he was coming in the summer, that was agreed and saw Andre Flo and Klaus Ektavar. Okay, Ektavar wouldn't have made much difference. No, he was, he was just a tag on one. He was a makeshift make weight in a in a deal, but was a defender, but saw Andre Flo would have made a big difference and it didn't happen. Uh, Harry James Tattoo says Premier League clubs considering introducing a luxury tax and getting rid of points deductions. Richard Masters is a bad melt. We can't confirm more than either. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adam says, Afternoon, gents. Hope the team are well. Any idea who the last journalist asked about? Yeah, I've answered Andre Gomez. It was, mate, but would have been nice to hear it. Mark says, uh, My prediction's a 2 0 win at the weekend. Dom and Andre Gomez. And then they'll get a four-point deduction on Monday. Don't think it'll be four points. Don't forget, Mark, the the judge, if you want to call him that, in the last, in Forest here, and said it was three points for breaching. And then they had mitigation, or sorry, they had aggravation that took it to six points because their breach was massive. Um, and then they got two points back because they were on good behaviour. But he said in that ruling, he didn't understand where Everton had got the other three points from because Everton's breach was much lower than Forrest's. Um, and there was some, he felt there was some mitigation in there. So he felt Everton had been given three points for basically no reason. Mm. So it looks as done. This is when John Blaine's explained this. He's of the opinion, and I've gone about to John's knowledge on this, he's of the opinion that three points is the breach. Mm. And then you get up for aggravation or mark it down. Well, Everton have... So let's say it's three points. Everton have then got mitigation in the USM deal in those accounts was the sponsorship for USM Finch Farm and the stadium was more than 20 million. But that was suspended. Everton couldn't replace that because it's an ongoing contract. Um, And the, the thing is, without that suspension, Everton wouldn't have breached because everything else was coming down. So they've got that as to be used as mitigation. And there's also the argument that Everton have already been punished for two-thirds of this reporting period anyway. So that's an argument that Everton may well have. So you could see a world where Everton get three points for breaching and get two points back for the USM thing and the uh, the, the fact we've been punished for two-thirds already. Some people think it'll be no points. I don't see that happening, I think. I just don't see how the Premier League would be comfortable with Everton breaching and not getting any mm. additional points. So, but so I think personally it'll be between one and two points. But I don't know. It's the reality. You might be right, Mark. I just just going by what the the, the IC said mm. in the last one for Forest. But then, like we said before, there's been three separate ones of these. And, yeah. But don't forget the points have come down in each one, ten to six to four. Yeah. So and now, of course, with them get saying the scrap in it, I think Everton and Forest could. I think if Everton get any more than than one point, they should appeal. Mm. And tell the Premier League you're gonna appeal it and drag this right on into the summer, because they come out and said they're considering getting rid of points deduction, so therefore them and Forrest will be in a strong position in the summer to say, this is going in two weeks. Mm. We are not, we just don't agree with this and see if you can kick up a fight, I don't know, threaten them with all sorts because it's work for City and Chelsea. Uh, 
Steep he says Deitch is such a bullshit merchant, talks a lot without actually saying anything. He'd definitely make a good insurance salesman. Notice how in every single press conference he brings up how there were issues before he got here. Yeah. And also that we won four games in December. The biggest thing for me is that he's he's managed three hundred Premier League games. I've played and I've managed. So what, mate? I've watched football for a long time. Don't need to say all that stuff. Just stick to what you're gonna, you know, what you're gonna do about it to turn it down. Um, James has just been to the classic football shirt store in Manchester. They had a massive one Everton yellow shirt from the 0809 with Sahar on the back. It shows how much of a joke club we've become. Not really. It just means that no one wa- no one wants to sell their Everton shirts. It's a second end, a second hand shop at the end of the day, isn't it? That's all it is. Just a second hand shop. It's a big jumble sale. Everyone's keeping the classic Everton exactly. shirt. Exactly. That's exactly right. Paul says positive slam from our form boys. Only lost four of the last ten games. That can be. That there can you go. Be considered. There you go. Haven't I seen something? I don't know. This can't be right though, is it? Can it? I'd seen something say six. Oh yeah, no, it is sixty-six percent of the points Everton have got this year have been from an IC, an independent commission, in twenty twenty-four. But I don't know whether it's actually sixty-six percent. Mm. But I just saw that, thought it was amusing. Jez says a uh, Ned Rogers something dice back on the gravel. There you go. David Wilkinson says the clubs in the Premier League are given the decision from the IC at the same time and at that they both agreed the date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm quite sure they both, everyone's aware of, of what it is because I think it's got to be out by Monday anyway, hasn't mm-hmm. it? April the 8th is when if it gets officially announced, it can be announced at any time before. If it was no points... I think Everton had won it out there to try and build some momentum for Saturday. Bit of positive news for Saturday. I could be reading lots into absolutely nothing. But we'll know, I think, on Monday, won't we? So, if not before. Um, let's have a look at some of these Yao Chao comments. Um Emma says, Deitch's press conferences are completely pointless. He chats complete poo. Uh, Robbo says, load of guff. It's like listening to Matt Hancock 2020 all over again. Um, Andrew Amy says, does Sean need his own song? Sean who? Sean Deitch. Sean Styles. I'd imagine. Sean Styles. I'd imagine. That's incredible. Mm. Uh, Royal Blue says how many media staff in response to the uh, the fact you can't hear some of the questions that, that, I, I do honestly find it absolutely bewildering mm. that Everton have press conferences and you can't hear the questions yeah, yeah, yeah. that is absolutely whoever's in control in the room should be making sure that whoever's asking a question uses a microphone. Can't they just, can't they have this all prepared before? It is absolutely, I'm sorry, it's pathetic. It's pathetic. And I know people won't like me at the club for saying that, but it is pathetic. The whole point of those press conferences is so that if you're going to put them on live, and Everton have, they're live on YouTube and they make a big deal that they're on Kick because, you know, Kick's one of the sponsors and you can't hear them. What's the point then? Hmm. Literally, the manager answered a question where we did not know who he was talking about. Now, it's sound afterwards to go when it's in print to go, who, who, who's, who, who re, who's reading? It's a, it's a on YouTube or it's on kick. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. What about this one? James says, John told me this before as well. Spurs lost 300 million and still complied. Yeah, because of the stadium and stuff. It's mad, isn't it? No, it doesn't make any sense. Said this last. Said that we've said this numerous times. It's not about what you lose. It's about it's it's all the other factors, isn't it? Unfortunately, Everton don't really have any other factors. 
it's um, it's what you've put money into. Everton have just made a mess of it. Mm. I don't think we can point fingers at other clubs and say, well, why are they getting away with it? Or why we know? No, no, I'm just no, saying. No, 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 I'm mad, saying it's you can lose money. How do you? How football? It's ridiculous in the first place because people go, you lost that x amount of money. Well, well, yes, we did lose it, but we didn't lose it in a way. We just didn't make it. If that makes any sense, the, mm. someone had to put that money in, and we've used loans, and we've used. Um, uh, you know, we've had loans from the owner mm-hmm. and stuff. It it doesn't make any money, any sense. But that's that's the situation we're in, aren't mm-hmm. we? So, um, Everton, Everton. The number one thing I took from the accounts was how poorly Everton are run. That they can't somehow make money from the fans, and that's the number one thing I take from it. And we've had this discussion loads of times. How do you monetize the Everton fan base? That has got to be the number one question. There are people all over social media who are you know, fans who make money from Everton. It's how we earn our living. There's people out there who sell T-shirts and merchandise. They That's how they make their living. Why can't Everton? How don't Everton know how to tap into that? Well, number one is because the merchandise they bring out is is namely Not garbage. They brought a range out recently, and it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible, and no one will buy it. Is that just fanatics, though? But no, that's what I'm saying. That's that's fanatics. But mm-hmm. I'm saying they don't know how to tap in to the market that is present. People who sell gear online, the stuff's reactive. It's normally got some kind of mm. wit about it, or it's trendy, or it's you know I. It's it's Everton, Everton fans will will buy stuff if it's not over the top and it's a little bit like I remember they used to sell t-shirts in the shop, little polos with a little tower on it. Done really well, I know that for a fact. Done really well, and then they just I had one, you were stop making them. They just stop making them. Why stop making something that sells? You know, look at all of the look at all of like the uh, major brands in the world. If they've got something that sells, they never stop selling it. You know, Nike don't stop selling t-shirts with a big Nike tick on it or mm. Adidas with just a simple Adidas Adidas originals on it. Why stop selling something that sells? It doesn't make any sense. And the simple fact is, Everton do not offer a good enough range of gear that Evertonians want to buy, and that mm. that has to be a major point. And that's why the kit deals are capped. That's why. That's why it's all rubbish, and it needs to be addressed massively. How are, if we've got this worldwide fan base? Why are we not selling? Well, number one, when you buy an Everton top, it has to be shipped from America to America, let's say, or Australia. And when they get them, the sizes don't correlate with what they're buying or what they're seeing. Why haven't we got an American? Why haven't we got an American shop that Americans can see what the sizes are related to them, and it gets shipped to them? And if it doesn't fit, they can ship it back. Remember when we were told all this all was going to yeah. be going on by Fanatics? So yeah. what's happening is if Fanatics not good enough, is it Everton not good enough chasing them? Is it is there a disconnect between the two? Is it a is it a non belief in stuff will sell? I mean, you know, taking like the, the merchandise we sell. It's all done to order, isn't it? Yeah. So why aren't so I'm sure Everton could do the same. Well, there's loads of things like which are, which would like be safer for them yeah. if they don't want to panic. There's loads it. of things. It's like this season. You go in the shop now, the shop is full of gear, Hummel gear, because no no one I think wants to buy Hummel gear because they know they know they're going. Because they're going mm-hmm. at the end of the season. That's we have this thing of like I think it's been prevalent for years that it's almost like once one season's over, it's done. You put it in your box. I know that's slightly different now because, as we were talking before, old stuff is becoming so expensive. Mm. You know, you can buy an away top. I'd say to people, buy an away top now for 15 quid because oh, in yeah. about four or five years, That'll be 50. it'll be worth 50 quid. Mm. Um, that is so I would buy, I would buy, and I will. I will. Actually, we need. Well, we haven't got any of this year's. We haven't no, got any of this no. year's because, yeah. Uh, I bought a couple of training tops last week because they're 12 quid and when I go running you might as well have any training top that's cheaper than buying a training top so I I bought stuff mm. but loads of people go well I'm not buying none because next year it's Castori and so that means it's whole different mm. stuff and I'm not wearing no we're, we're funny like that I think like, there's a lot of that goes on certainly in this city um, but we also we also haven't like educate not educate that's probably the wrong word i think other fan bases have bought into buy into that thing of like everyone has a kit 
and we all have our kits and we all wear that. We're not like a fan base like that. So what do you do to get around that? You have to come up with other ways. Then if you if they're not prepared to buy the kit, then have training gear or have mm. limited edition tops like mm. we've seen with the Seamus Coleman Island top. Yeah, yeah. Make sure somebody's buying something every year because I just think there's loads of it. You, I guarantee you do not own one piece of merchandise from this year you personally not zero ned goes that's got all three kits ned goes to china yeah um he doesn't own anything i've bought two training tops i don't think john will have bought anything so the four of us in this room i'm probably the only one who's bought anything for me this season Mm -hmm. you'll have bought for zach Mm -hmm. um and that's there's too much. Yeah, of he's that. got two training tops. He's got a full like tra- like training tracky thing. There's like a mm. t-shirt and like bottoms. It's yeah. tra- all tra- yeah. and he's got the three kits. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I'm buying some yeah. shop. Do they ever consult with the fan base on what retro tops they want? So we brought out yeah. one retro top this season, mm. and it's the uh, Wayne Wayne Rooney's first Everton kit, the 2002. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did mm. they consult with the fan base on that, or did they just bring that out? Mm. Right. If you buy that from the club shop. Could Everton say, right, mm. we've got the n- name and number to go with that from that season as well. So if you come in and buy that retro top, you can actually have Rooney 18 on the back of it or Kevin Campbell 9 on the back of it mm. if you want. Why mm. not? Why no, not? Why not do that? Why not offer? Fergus and Ten- Oh, no, it's the one before that. Is- any, no, no, don't cross there, yeah. any retro top, mm. any retro top from mm. the shop. Um, we've got the exact name and number. So if you go yeah. in and want the 85 kit, we've got the 85 number for you. You can have number nine. Why? Mm. Like, these are the things. <laughs> that wouldn't take much to do, would no, it? No, exactly. And these are the things that, like, for me, as just a normal person, I they, they're like no-brainers to me. Mm. Like, I have the Premier League patches from, like, that kit as well. I have yes. the uh, 100-year badge that went on that kit mm. so it's so it so it's exactly feels as like it was so it yeah, feels yeah. authentic mm. why wouldn't you do these things uh, you know you're buying that kit say do you want the do you want the rooney on it as well mm. yeah well actually we'll have the rooney that'll be mm. another 15 pounds sir mm. thank you very much yeah they are mate i think you sound like shoot you sir no well, well, i've seen them the other night there you go there but like stuff like that to me yeah, is yeah. a no-brainer that's an absolute... Well, that's no- how you, you make extra quid, extra yeah. pennies. That's, a, that's yeah. what we all should be doing. Yeah. Do you want the European, do you want the European uh, Cup kit with, with, with the number seven? The European Cup and his cup kit with the number seven on the back from the final or mm. the number nine? Or do you want the 84 kit with, with Graeme Sharp's number or Andy Gray's number because they're mm. the goal scorers? Mm. These are the things. These are the things. Like the 87 kit... The 87 kit. You can't even get the 87 away kit. Why can't you get the 87 away kit? It's, be- it's a beloved kit. These things are mad to me, absolutely mad, and I just guarantee that nobody's ever thinking about. But no one's asking of the fan. They no one's asking the fan base either. No one's saying to the fan base. But they, they should be all doable things. Yeah, exactly. And you don't have to go. Well, we'll get ten thousand of I, them because we won't sell ten thousand. I think if you went to the fan base now and you said to them, and we will be sorting out the shirts. Don't be worried. The shirts are going back up. If you. What shirt do you want? And I reckon loads of Evertonians would say, right now, who care, will go, we want the white pinstripe kit from 1993, right? Loads want that. That's loads of people's favourite kit. Which one? The one we've got over there with the... The one you went to Wimbledon? The Palace? Palace one. Palace there, yeah, I can see it now. Right, loads of people would have that because it was a shirt that was... Bernard. It was a limited edition shirt that nobody... Loads of people didn't get old yeah, off because yeah, they, yeah, I think yeah. they sold three thousand. We wore it five times, and 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 we and three thousand. Go ahead, put it in front of the camera. Go on. Right. So you know what's mad about this shirt is, right? I'll tell you what's mad about this shirt. Okay, you can move it now because it's covering me, yeah. and I'm talent. So, um, know what's mad about that shirt is that there's a Manchester City version of that shirt mm, yeah, on score draw. Similar. Right, who make ours? So they're already making it, and I know for a fact that somebody buys that the Man City shirts mm. and converts them into Everton yeah, shirts. Yeah. Right, why which does that? Right, why wouldn't you? So why not approach Score Draw and go? Know that Man City shirt that you're making? That's obviously quite popular. Mm. Can you just make uh, two thousand Everton shirts, and we'll see if they sell? Mm. All you got to do is change the badge and change the sponsor, and that's all you've got to do. And let's see if they sell. Mm. And if they sell, then you know you'll make more. And I, if you even brought that out as a limited edition, limited edition shirt, 
three thousand. Shoved them in the shop. Limited edition. Let's see how they sell. And if they sell, let's make more. You've already got the shirt. They're making them for Man City. These are the things that I don't understand. What? Or and as I said, put a thing on. Go. We're doing a poll. We're doing a poll. Yeah, yeah. What's your favourite Everton Out shirt? And you know what? Loads of people might go. It's the nineteen ninety eight shirt. Now I don't particularly like the nineteen ninety eight, but I have bought it and it's got. My, I'm getting Matarati. I just haven't had the time to go and get it sorted. Mm. But loads, I know loads of people who love that shirt, really, yeah. right? I know. Well, loads of people like the 86 shirt, and I absolutely hate the no, 86 I like the 86 shirt. shirt. No, no, I don't like it. I, it it's... brings bad memories, mm. but loads of people like the 98. Have you said to people, do you want the 98 shirt? They may go, yeah, actually, I'd love to buy that. But Everton could do we even make it fun and do a competition, go the two shirts with right. can obviously this, this, vote for whichever wins. So, do you know what let I mean? me just add another layer of this while with the dead boring, so my kits. Mm. So we're getting... Castori, by the looks of it. Castori have just taken over Umbro in the UK, the license. So any kit that has got Umbro is an Umbro kit that, if it's Everton, therefore should be able to have Umbro on it, if that's what we're saying. If they've got the license to make Umbro kits, mm -hmm. then you can put Umbro. So when we add Umbro... So we should have Umbro. When we add Umbro, all the retro kits add Umbro on them. No, no, no. But I'm so, saying, are you saying our kit should be made by Umbro? No, I'm year? saying our retro kit oh, okay. that we have in the past yeah. should be able to have Umbro to add that extra layer of authenticity, right? Why aren't we speaking to the fans and going, what's your favourite retro kit of all time? And what what makes that more significant? Mm, maybe that will leave Goodison next season. And therefore... A retro, what were your five fa most famous Everton kits that Everton have wore while being at Goodison Park? Can be mm. home away, third, doesn't make a difference. And people go, give them a choice. So straight away, you're cutting the, the options down, aren't you? Mm. Like they did when we brought the new kit out. And straight away, you're saying to people, what did you love? I love the 87, right? We've got that. I love the 87 away. Or oh, we haven't got that. Maybe we'll do that. Mm. And do a vote. And I tell you what, you might get some weird answers that you never thought. And the 98 kit would be a big one. And then suddenly you'll see loads of people walking around with the 98 kit with ball on the back, Campbell on the back, Bambi on the back, of course. You know, Of course. Of course. Why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? You know, speed on the back and you'd have them all cutting the collars like I did when I bought it. Um, honestly, there should be a room of people thinking of all this stuff because that's how you make money. That's how you make money at a football club. You give people what they want. And at the moment at Everton, they do not give people what they want. So therefore, people don't buy stuff. So therefore, when fanatics come in and look at the books and go, what did you sell last season? They go, didn't really sell that much. Oh, well then, here's your deal. And people go, oh shit. Well, then we're not going to get a very good deal, are they? Mm. Someone just mentioned it here, the 83 long sleeve yellow kit. Well, we've got a version in here. We've got two of them in here. Why aren't they remaking that? Why aren't they re Of 83? The 84, uh, sorry. You mean 80? The Lecoq Sport TV. Oh, the Lecoq Sport 85. 85 shit, sorry. Tremendous, um, yeah. We had a kit in, was it 83? We had one. Or was it? Oh, no, do you remember the white version of the 87 kit? Yeah, yeah. The diamonds, that's incredible. I had that when I was a kid. Just like a faint, I had that yeah, when I was a white kid. with the faint. Never wore that. it. It never was amazing. It. it was like Chelsea. And, it was right, a bit like Chelsea, right? wasn't it? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and you can that. get the Chelsea version in blue on score draw. I want so, the white, though. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. the design is already there. Yeah, score draw already it make it. All you got to do is flip it round mm -hmm. and have a white version. With, but you can tell I really the, like I this I think we only wore we might have wore it once. We never wore it. We never wore it. Never wore it. Because remember, it never was a lovely blue shorts, white socks. We never wore brilliant. it. And it was like, yeah, diamond. We never Diamonds wore it. Running. There's a kit. There's, a, pic, there's a picture in my mum's of me wearing it. Yeah. Um, I'll have to get that dug out. It was out. tremendous. And I love the, I love the 82, but it's stuff 83, like that. Like it. Yeah. But there's a version of the, there's a, ve there's a version of the Lecoq, there's a white Lecoq sport t-shirt from 85, 86. That was, that was never sold. That is just white. Just, just a white yeah, shirt. Yeah. So we had a yellow, which yeah. was amazing. There's a picture mm. of Gary Lineker wearing it. There's the white and the blue, and there's just the white that we never wore. Mm. Stuff like that, people love. People love. I know. Well, the I... 82, 83, I've showed you this before. You know the half near one? Yeah. We've got Ned. See that shirt there, straight ahead? Is it that one? No, no. There's... Just put your hand with the three blue shirts on the runners. Like that middle one. It's... Just pull that out with your hands on now. Lift yeah. that out for me. There's a white version. It's the that. number eight. Oh. Yeah, that one. Bring yeah. it out, the half near one. Right, bring it here. Just put it in front of the screen. So, bring it over. Right, so Everton, this was 82, 83. This kit's amazing. 
and Everton had the away kit, which was that kit, but it was white, white with a blue it. pinstripe. It was just the same, but reversed in white. It was, and we won a Brighton in it. It was amazing. I'd love that. Yeah. So if you've already got a white, I would love that version yeah. of that. But that's what I'm saying. If you don't offer people what they want, no, so that's, that's, that's minute, 85. No, just, that's 85. Right. What we won the league in that. So one. we played like twice Sheffield Wednesday Sheffield and Leicester Wednesday, in that. Yeah. You can't get that. No. Obviously, Rich makes them. They're mm. amazing. Look how amazing they are. They're the shirt people actually want because you couldn't buy them. And the timeless then. The ti- they, that's that to me. Look, we've got Andy Gray on uh, Peter, Peter Reed on the back. And you've got visions of Andy Gray at left scoring that. at that. That one's you've got visions of you got visions. We all know what we saw. Andy mm-hmm. Gray running over telling the pit the Leicester fella, you're a knobhead yep. and all Steve that. Right? Yep. People want shit they can't get hold of or mm-hmm. couldn't get hold of at the time. But this what I'm saying is That's you've, right. no, you've done that. We're done. You've, you've got, got that. Job. That you've done a great that You've done your job. job. Well done. But the point being is you've got to mm. you've got to offer people what they want rather than what you think they want. There's no point bringing a line out. No, no, that's fine. But it is an amazing share because pass it over a minute. Look, 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 pass a minute. Look at that. What? <laughs> Why? That, just to, because they're under this, I'm going to footy. I put it on to that. Last you know. ever. Just under me. Last yeah. ever share Leighton Bain scored mm. the goal in, in that's the right. league. That's right, that's why I put it that's on. That's why I got it done. And I'm in fact, I'm waiting for, I would. I need to get a Carabao mm. Cup. No, we're still live, John. We're still yeah, very yeah. much live. Of course we are. Of course you can. John's off to uh, rattle some cages. Go and um, rattle some cages, John. So Everton brought a range out recently, and I imagine there is a there is a Aston Villa version of this range, and I imagine whoever else does mm. Fnatic there'll be a range of... And it's god-awful. It's god-awful. Like, okay. I expect nobody to buy fence. it. No, but it's god-awful. Mm. And what are you showing, What are you giving me that for? Just come on. So Ignore it's god them. awful, right? And mm. no one asks for it, and nobody wants it. Mm. And we people in Liverpool don't buy this stuff. So go to the fan base, ask them what they want out mm. of a out of a range, and you'll find people will buy it. And then when it when it comes to re you know redoing these deals with whoever, they'll offer us more money because our fan base is buying stuff. Like I see Liverpool stuff, and all it has is a night tick with Liverpool on it. Why aren't we selling t-shirts with just like? Some kind of just basic T-shirt that someone will go, I'll buy that, it's 15 quid. And it mm-hmm. just has Everton written on it and a Hummel sign or a Castor sign. No, it has to have all kinds of mad patterns on it. Nobody's buying. Yeah. Or it's a training top that you don't want to wear because it's 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 not a, just a normal T-shirt. This is what we have to start doing at our football club to start making some money. There you go. Yeah, got to. I've had me rant. I've no, you've had that. No, but they're all... Just good, all good, good, yeah, all yeah. good stuff, innit? Yeah. The, um... Mm-hmm. It's all. We, it's just one of them things, isn't it? It's one of them mm. things that we need. Um, we need a different thought. We mm. need a different thought process. We need a re- we need a reset in so many areas need, of the club. What we need, right, at our club, mm. working groups, not the yeah, fans yeah, forum, yeah. not the fab working groups, mm. where you get people in. You get people into a room. I did one a few years back. Uh, it must have been around COVID because we did it on Zoom and there was loads of people and it was a consult and I think it was something to do with the new tower that we use a lot and we use on the third kit and this consultancy firm had loads of people in a ro- on Zoom asking questions and one of the questions was like is anything off limits and they were oh, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. bird, and I said no we're at the live bird. we had the live bird first it was on our kit nothing should be off limits if you want to take something back of the city and I would love there to be more of them where they're sitting down and they're asking people mm-hmm. about shit why don't number one shit question should be why didn't you buy an Everton kit this season that should be the first question mm-hmm. why didn't you buy one of the do you like the Everton kits yes why didn't you buy one well they only last a year and look at that mm-hmm. stupid big sponsor that's on the front of it it's sort of okay is there any way we can get you to buy that shirt yeah don't have a big stupid sponsor on the front then <laughs> oh yeah but we can't really do that west ham do it so why can't you do it yeah but yeah but west ham do it they offer large boy sizes and that's how they get round it could we do that mm. yeah but it's in the contact could you not change the contact is the contact if we sell more shirts would that bridge the gap and then you'd have more representation on the street well yeah well what else well they're too expensive there's anything we do about that we well, could could make a different version of it yeah but but at least you'd find out the answers to the question it which is 
Why don't Everton buy more kits? Why don't you sell more food on a match day? Why aren't you buying t- a cup of tea or a pint of lager in the ground? Do they do these things? Do they ever sit down and have working groups? Yes, they send out surveys, and that's great, and that's just an email. But why not? Se- why not send out? Why not? Why not actually speak to the fans? What colours do you want us to primarily wear? You know, do you do? Is there a mad colour you'd like to see us go back to? Do you want to see us wearing amber every two years? Do you want to see us wearing white every two years? Do you want to see us wearing black? Why aren't we asking the all of the fans mm-hmm. about these things? It's it. These are the things that we. If you want someone to buy something, give them something they want to buy. Fair play. I mean, Dylan says I didn't buy an Everton kit this year because I'm disgusted with everything to do with the club. And that's fair enough. Mm. Fair enough. It's like when we brought the, the we got the Fisher Price badge. I didn't buy anything that season. That was my protest. Mm. <laughs> Simon says. Uh, Simon says retro football shirts a big business. Yeah. Right? The club is missing a trick. The, the, at the moment, Nike are bringing out the 98 Ronaldo shirt to re, the re and it's not even wouldn't mind it's not even like if you're Ronaldo you're like I, I fucking hate that kit oh well, I've got his bad memories of it you'd rather be the yellow one and the and they're also bringing out they're bringing out and this is where they're really clever they're bringing out the first ever kit that the American women's team won the World Cup in with Mia Ham on the back because actually, American female kits sell more kits than anybody else in the world. It's the most in-demand shirt in the world. So they got taking it back to the original. The '98 Brazil kit is is I actually had it at the time. And give it away to someone like a tit that I am. Um, but that is massively sought after. Adidas are bring re-releasing loads of their classic kits because the market is just unbelievable. What are we doing? We're just sitting there twiddling after well hope, I mean this is stuff that we have definitely got to get a grip of as yeah. we move forward didn't they put years back in Asda show the kids they what they had a couple of they had replica kits in Asda the NEC ones replica kit in Asda yeah I'm not sure about that I know you can buy last year's training kit and TK Maxx at the moment can um, you? yeah but the, this mm. is it go to the fans and say what's the number one kit you would like to see reproduced for our I mean it's too mm-hmm. late now for our last season at yeah. Goodison and forget about like yeah, but they could still they could still do one it's only March yeah, you could well, bring it out for that bring it out, bring it out in September Christmas, or whatever or, or even Christmas yeah and I bet you they'd be really shocked by by what fans actually want mm-hmm. rather than what they're giving fans Dave Wilkinson says the clubs in the Premier League given the decision from the IC at the same time and at that time they both agreed the date for officially Releasing, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian Garside says, regarding the phone discussion earlier, Dyche prefer McNeil. Um, Dave, we didn't use the same KC for the appeal, but he did all the preliminary stuff. Someone else went and represented us in the appeal, but he was involved. He's in. the executive producer, yeah, but he didn't direct it. Mm. Uh, Martin Green says, uh, 2 0 down to Wimbledon in 94 and 2 0 down to Palace 22, West Ham away. Uh, we were all. We were all but down at those times. We've not been down and near, nowhere near the level of jeopardy this season. Okay. Keithy says, I wish Everton had sought out the audio and the mics out at press conferences. It's pretty poor. Yeah. Mark Mack likes the black and pink one we wore versus Blackburn, Arteta and Kale. And he also likes the 1995 Charity Shield one. Yeah. Uh, yeah Rob, we released that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rob says, uh, I've two Everton shirt box sets for sale if anyone's interested. One is the 84-85 box with the shirt, medal and DVD in it. And the other one is Duncan's testimonial, which is also signed and also has a signed program. Mm-hmm. There you go. If anyone's interested in them, get in touch with Rob. Martin Kitney says, the food and drink in the ground is horrendous. Many times they haven't had hot water for drinks in the upper Bullens or Mars bars. Um, yeah. Listen, these are all things that hopefully will become things of the past when we move to the new stadium. We shouldn't have to wait that long for it for it to improve, but that's just the way it is. And these are all ways that Everton can get, uh, as John would say, a bit more of your wallet share, if you like. Exactly, yeah. Um, just having a look here. Uh, Verticus says, I got the kits recently when they dropped the price. I love the home kit, minus the sponsor, but I probably should have waited in case we do get relegated because I'll immediately bin it. Um, 
Steepy says there's a bargain store in Runcorn's Shopping City that sells defective pyjamas and they were selling Everton keeper shirts for a fiver with Angry Birds on the sleeve. <laughs> Um, Sophie says she never saw those tweet the other day bang on Machiri and Ken Wright have destroyed the club I mean tell, just tell me who's buying that that's horrific horrific um, Al says uh, why isn't the Premier League run as a collective where marketing is done for the teams in the Premier League level exactly Ned it's mm. the worst thing don't in the world know. don't know mate Um Steve P says, Baz, I don't mean to speak ill, but um, the stuff you're talking about all down to Ken Knight, he made us a joke. We are today. He never wanted us to be big commercially. Mm. Maybe, but then, Mishiri should have... If you own a club, and you should be looking at every every aspect of it, shouldn't you? Mm. Just go and I'll just give you a, a suitcase full of money when you need it. Isn't, you know, it's not really... Uh, it's not doing it, is it? It's not doing it. So, Adam loved the 85 goalkeeper shirt, Neville Southall's. Mm-hmm. Uh, Simon says 85, 86 is my favourite shirt. Lineker had a great season and great football. Just a shame he couldn't have kept Lineker longer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Right, that's us done. That went in a different direction than I thought it was going to go, yeah, but yeah. why not? Why not? There was nothing really to say on the football front today and there was nothing to say on him um, we've said a lot haven't we about points deductions and all ownership stuff so mm. there you go do something totally different um, yeah there you go right take it easy and uh, check out the 1878 FM podcast that is out it is funny go and give it a listen and watch and all of that mm. take it easy we'll see you later bye